Okay, so this actually gets a laugh in the classroom. But I'm being quite serious. And let's think about it for a second. If you want a family, generally you plan it. Planning a family is pretty important. And so planning a Revit family is equally as important. Sure, we could go and tackle it just like a block or a cell or whatever your other CAD name for a library item is. But what we're trying to do here is create a smart parametric object with the potential to have so much more data in it than your traditional CAD systems that we need to get this right from the start. And so for many companies, I've written a family planning guide. And the basis of this is a planning sheet where we actually draw out our family before we make a start. This document is included in the documentation folder, but let's take a look at it anyway. This page can be the starting point for your family creation. I can use this Revit family development page also in my QA process. So here I can write my family name, give it a description. Do we need a type catalog? Is an IES file required, which would be necessary if we were creating a light fitting? Is a lookup table required? We can then list the parameter names and then start sketching. But we don't need to sketch everything. We don't need to take a lot of time on this. We could get a photograph, paste a photograph in here of the family that we're trying to create, and then roughly draw what we want in terms of the family. Let's say we had a chair. We can draw the chair in plan, and so on. This method of planning your families will give you consistent families. And if you're using things like shared parameters, you can make sure that those shared parameters are described under the parameter name. We will be looking at this in lots more detail. And as we go through into some of the exercises, I've provided some sheets where I've already sketched the exercises so you can get a feel for how we use this document.